I am now recording. This is a uh, bit of a, I guess, documentation of what I've been up to for the last couple of months or whatever you want to call it. I have just finished some very heavy duty repairs on my balance board. Uh, they call it the hoverboard. Some people call it skywalkers, moonwalkers. Uh, there's a million different names. I have, I now am in possession of three of these, uh, electric uh, type of things. I do have this Yami electric scooter I bought for 400 something dollars. I kind of regret it, kind of, because it is, you, it is good. It does what it needs to do, but it's like, it's made out of very tough, uh, heavy, uh, metal. So the entire thing weighs a lot. And those types of things should never weigh that much. For some reason, I still have this. This is my old um, Eco Rico scooter M5, I believe. I cannibalized it, tore it up, and sold it for parts. And this is the coup de gras right here. This this baby I've been I worked on and built for the last couple of so many weeks. And it finally is finished, and it, I, I had to reprogram the, you know, you thank God for YouTube these days. I mean, I would have probably not found the information fast enough, but oh, it's been on all the night. All right. So this is the actual controller, uh, not controller, but the display. It started off with only uh, five PAS levels, pedal assist levels. But I reprogrammed it to have nine, like it's supposed to. I still don't really know what the levels will, will how much power is going to come out of them from that. I set the throttle to be at PAS of six, so it's not even giving me full. This this can go to a thousand plus watts if I want it to. So it's not going to give me the full power. But you know, when I hit the throttle and I'm just going, it's extremely fast anyway so i don't you know see a reason to go faster than that this thing kicks ass it costs me like a lot of money but i can tell you that the uh potential for this is greater than if you were to spend the same amount of money on something like a rad wagon or something like that this thing uh you know it's 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 just so much more modifiable. Um, it's more powerful. And that's the thing people want. They want to buy these kits, put them on the bikes that they have, and you can take it off and put it on another bike at some point down the line. You know, we can't really do that if you buy the thing made by the company and you can modify it. That's another point to make. I can go inside of it and reprogram it to be even more powerful than it already is. And it is, I don't know, this technology must be new. I don't know what the case is, but it is definitely a very powerful motor. You feel like you're on a mini motorcycle when you're riding this thing, and it's just, all it is is this battery and this motor inside of the midsection. There's no big hub motor. There's no nothing in the front. So in a lot of ways, you might be riding this around, and people will not know that you're on an electric bike. Except for the fact that you're going really fast and you're not pedaling at all. And I'm going to give you a preview of what it can do. Um, try to do this with the phone here. I'll put the phone down here somewhere. Give you a little taste of what kind of power this thing is called. That's just what the damn, uh, that's, that, that, that's just what me tapping the throttle. That's not even putting the full power into it. And, uh, you know, I hear all, I read about, it. I've done a lot of research on this kind of thing. And, um, this is the BBS HD, you know, this is the more powerful, more advanced, latest model of the, uh, electric mid-drive motor from the Fang. I put a 52 volt on it because I hear the 48 volts sort of lags out once it starts to run to 
run his battery lower. 52 volt keeps the same amount of power for pretty much the entire length of, uh, of the battery's lifespan. And the only cost that this thing's going to have is the cycle of the battery. Once the battery's run its course, you got to buy a new one. So, compared to having a, a car or pay insurance monthly, that's nothing. So, it should last a couple of years and then find, get back, buy a new battery. And I'm planning to hopefully go solid state battery at some point. And uh, that's the beautiful beauty of this thing is future proof. Once these new battery types come out, and we're all running with solid state batteries instead of these chemically, uh, you know, lithium kind of batteries, then uh, sky's the limit. Talking about longer battery life, uh, lighter, I think. I think the solid state one's probably the lighter and everything. So. You just swap out batteries, so it doesn't matter what battery you use, it takes anything. Um, and that's the thing about it. You can you buy you buy that thing for the same price at a company and uh, it will basically uh, never be able to go further. You know what I mean? There's people that are modifying theirs to run at seventy two volts. That's insane, right? But that thing can handle it. That Batfang BBSHD can handle it. So I'm going to show you something real quick. What does that say right there? This scooter I have here, due to circumstances that were just unnecessary, was confiscated as arrest evidence by the NYPD. I beat my case in court because it wasn't a case. It was nothing. And um, they had to give it back to me because it was no longer a case pending. So they have to give it back. The state they gave it back to me in was terrible. They broke it. Should I sue the NYPD for breaking my property? Isn't that something you can do? I let it go. But anyway, they broke it. I could not run it after they gave it back to me. And this was months ago. So it's been in their possession for months. So after sitting here fiddling with it for a long time, I decided, well, something's wrong with it. Figure it out. It was able to turn back on once I got it charged. Um, I will indeed go into what was wrong with it so that other people can get an idea. I don't want this video going forever. But now it works. Green light is green. I can now go ahead and step on it and roll. The gyroscopes are now working normally. I mean, it feels the same way it always has felt. This is a very old scooter. I got it a gazillion years ago. The battery somehow still keeps a good charge. It kind of leans because it is old and, and kind of crappy. Uh, but I'm very shocked that after all it's been through, I can still kind of run with, run it and use it. So I don't have to sell it. I can still use it to just basically get around, go to the store, walk around, you know, just hang out with it. It might be illegal in New York or whatever you want to call it, but this is such a useful tool. So I don't see the point of that. Okay, so it's, it, it doesn't like me very much. Whenever I step off of it, it does this little kick bull crap. So you're going to notice that. It jumps whenever you try to get off of it. And it's working. And it wasn't working before. I'm going to go into why it wasn't working. So, you know, I'm going to take a pause real quick and then we'll be right back. And we are back. Now I've taken off the cover, as you can see. Now, what we're going to get into is the reason why this thing was not working. I honestly had no clue. The thing is that one side lit up and worked. This side. And I looked online and read about it. It said basically if only one side is working, typically it means it's the other side's board is bad. So I said to myself, if that's the case, that's the case. Turned out not to be the case. When they took my scooter apart at the police station, and I saw him doing it through the jail bars, 
Yes, I was in the freaking jail there, bro. And he took my scooter apart. He had to disconnect the battery so that when they store it, it's not going to potentially do anything or run away with itself or turn on. So they had to open it up with a screwdriver. Apparently, they have hand, you know, they have tools at the police station. And they disassembled my scooter and they took the battery out, disconnected the battery terminal right here, not terminal, but connector. And I noticed that, like, he didn't even just disconnect the battery, he disconnected the, all the power stuff going to the main board. Uh, he has no clue what he's disconnecting, so Mr. Wonderful took it apart. I had to put it all back together, but I did notice that because it was in storage wherever they had it for so long, it not only had a bunch of spider webs inside of it, because spiders found it a wonderful place to build the home. I'm going to have to open this up to show you. The main culprit for why this thing was not working was this. This this bastard right here. Oops, I'm pointing the wrong way. I guess you're going. All right, so this, basically it was this. This thing had become so caked with uh, corrosion. This, this wire here became so caked with corrosion that it could not connect to the other side anymore. And that's the primary reason why the scooter runs is that it's it's able to connect both ends. I'm not going to pull that apart because it is still very, you know. I cleaned this whole thing off with alcohol so it looks a lot better now. But when it initially came back, it was severely... Uh, full of corrosion. This is horrible. And rusted over corrosion. I mean, look at this thing here. Obviously, this whole thing's full of corrosion and stuff. But these connectors are fine. There's nothing wrong with those. So that's why. And uh, th this rust here is, is due to that, too. This whole thing is caked with rust and, and all that. I can only... I, I can't say why it got this rusty. I don't exactly know. I didn't run it in the rain that much, not to my knowledge. But all he had, all he did was take these connectors off and leave them exposed to air. And suddenly they developed insane amounts of corrosion and rust. And uh, what that did was prevent them from connecting. And if your scooter is in the same position as mine and somehow, some way... You get it back from whoever, and it's, you know, not working. One side's not working. I'm just making this video to say, don't throw it out in the garbage. It's still probably good. You just need to get these connectors to connect and um, keep them that way. In this case, I'll kind of give you a preview of what happens. I'm pretty sure it's not going to turn on properly. I'm going to turn it on. So it is turning on really well now in this case because it is connected. But this little black wire here, once I just nudge it a little bit to the left or right, it will disconnect and completely ruin everything and it won't work anymore. So I'm going to completely glue it down in its position with some monkey glue. And it will never be able to move again from this position. And... Uh, Hopefully that cures the problem because I can't get inside of there. As you can see, everything's encased in a, in a in a very big plastic thing. So I can't get inside of there to clean off the corrosion, sadly. So I'm just going to have to glue it all together and try to keep everything stuck in its current state. And then it will work permanently. And that's it. I'm going to leave it at that. Um... Just, uh, you know, if you have the same issue, that's, there is a way to get it back up and running full. So, that's all I got to say.